You know, if there's one question I get asked more than any other, more even than if Big Bang Theory explains the beginning of everything, then really, how can you explain the nanny? That question would have to be, Mark, you're in a tropical paradise. You're here in Mauritius. What could you possibly do to stuff that up in terms of photographic opportunities? Well, today we're going to try and answer that question. Sick of my complaints about bad light, poor weather, and nothing to take pictures of, the photographic gods decided to send me to Mauritius for a few days for work. And I landed excited and ready to soak in the magic of the island. I mean, look at this place. I arrived overpacked and underprepared, but determined to do this tropical wonderland justice. Film, digital, I wasn't going to discriminate. My goal was to capture the beauty of the beaches and then move inland, ending up in the city of Port Louis for some more urban shots. But was I going to come away with images of Eden or would this be my photographic death in paradise? I decided at the outset I wasn't going to make it easy on myself. So I've introduced a couple of variables into this, the first of which being that I'm shooting on film because we're here in paradise and surely the best way to capture it is with low resolution grain and the imperfections of imperfect chemical processes. The second variable is the fact that not only am I shooting film, I'm shooting a film that I don't know anything about. It's called 400D. I assume that it is motion picture film that's re-spooled, bought off AliExpress of course, for the princely sum of about 14 Australian dollars. It says process C41, so we'll see if the ramjet's still on there and screws up my developing. The final variable is that I'm shooting with a 50 millimeter lens because really, if you want the drama of a landscape, surely you're going to use a 50 millimeter lens or not. I wasn't going to discriminate between film and digital, but perhaps I will. The 450D was exactly what it said on the label, up to a point. See this DX code on there? Notice that it's printed in gray rather than actual bare metal. Fortunately, my Nikon FE made me manually set the ISO, so I rated it at box speed and the images came out okay. I'll save my other fake Sinistil story for another video. This time, I did get a sense that I wasn't making the most of the opportunity. It was like I'd brought a hedgehog to a knife fight. Prickly and imprecise, 
my film was giving me FOMO. I knew I wanted something that gave me more versatility. I didn't need the f1.2 aperture on this Nikon 50mm lens, and I definitely wanted the convenience of zoom and digital. So the next morning, I went easy on myself with my Nikon Z6 that I'm filming on here, and my 24 to 200 f4 to 6.3.
Yeah, it's a tough gig. Actually, it was a bit confronting as a Western Australian to come out to an island like Mauritius and realise that there are actual beaches that rival those of my home state. I probably shouldn't say fortunately, but it's fair to say that Mauritius is let down by just two things. The first of these is that the sand is really coarse. I mean, seriously, it's like sandpaper, but without the paper, which is like sand. Look, you, you get the idea. Rather than gently exfoliating your skin, it debrides your heels down to bony stumps as you crawl back to where you left your sandals. The second and far more offensive is that the resort where I was staying isn't just by the beach, it's on the beach. Seriously, this little piece of paradise is leased by JW Marriott and it was a bit unsettling being asked to show you room keys as you're walking down a stretch of unspoilt coastline, even if that coastline fillets your feet like razor blades. Given the brutal history of colonialism that this country endured, it's good to see now that Mauritius is completely independent and its citizens are free to work for minimum wage at the resorts they could never afford to stay in themselves. Of course, I'm not complaining it means that the marquee sitting right on the beach was a venue for our major event. The fact that it was a dîner en blanc, though, was a bit unsettling. Dressed in all white, being served gin and tonics on the beach was proof that you don't need to shackle people in chains to enjoy the benefits of slavery. Also, for further proof, this time of the fact that I'm really not a landscape photographer, I submit as evidence my favourite photo so far. And yes, it was taken on film through the acetate of the marquee, observing how the other half live, even if, for that brief evening, I was the other half. Albeit, I had to buy myself a pair of white pants to participate in the neo-colonial convivialities. I mean, seriously, what guy who doesn't bowl, play cricket, or was in a 1990s boy band actually owns white pants? But I digress. Mauritius isn't just a playground for wealthy tourists, it's a vibrant, multicultural country, and if I was going to experience the breadth of everything the island had to offer, I needed to go urban, through the heartland of the country, its sugarcane fields and improbably sculptured mountain peaks. I don't know if there's a theme going on here for Dr. Zeus-style topology, but I've seen something similar in the Grampians in Australia, documenting it as a descent into the heart of photographic darkness. I was much more at peace here, as the minivan took me to the next stop on the tour, the bustling capital of Port Louis.
So quite a contrast from the luxury concentration camp that is beachside resort to the busy centre of a port city. Two worlds. I'd love to say that I was mixing it with the locals, but really, other than haggling over the price of a no-name power adapter for my phone, most of my time engaging with the Mauritians was workshopping with education agents. Rather than immersing myself in Mauritian culture, eating in the homes of my hosts and practicing my Creole, I spent most of my time making polite conversation over bitter coffee and mini quiches at the La Bourdonnais Waterfront Hotel. But I had come prepared for the wilds of Port Louis. Of course, every aspiring wildlife photographer needs a long telephoto to capture the rutting habits of distant wildebeest. And I brought this, my Nikon Z180 to 600 millimeters. God, that's heavy telephoto zoom. Okay, so... The plan was to climb Le Morne Mountain before sunrise, and I'd learned from a recent trip to the Grampian Mountain Ranges in Victoria, Australia, that a long lens is actually useful to pick out compositions for landscape photography. But I didn't have that lens then, so I brought it now. Sadly, everyone was too hungover on our final day at Le Morne to follow the slave route over the mountains, so every focal range covered, I rent my skills to the conditions. Those conditions were observing the sunset from my hotel balcony over the city of Port Louis. Yes, I suffer for my art.
No longer can I sit here claiming to be a crappy landscape photographer. I'm also a crappy cityscape photographer. And I've got to say, photographing things that don't move with a long lens is a lot easier than photographing sport or birds in flight. I continue to be impressed by this lens, but perhaps I need to use it a little bit more, get more familiar with it other than just taking it to the zoo like I did when I first got it. The fact that I could handhold it at 600 millimeters and get shots like this as the sun was setting is impressive. It's only when the darkness really set in that I slipped back to using my wider and brighter lenses. And that's the magic of modern photography. My film camera remained in the bag the rest of the trip and I even decided after dinner to slap on this 35 millimeter, that's not it, the smaller one, this 35 millimeter f1.8 lens and go into the city for some night street photography.
So I started in the beaches and ended up in the city. My mother did always warn me that I'd end up on the streets one day if I didn't do my homework and well there I was, in my element. I love the streets and even more so when they aren't polluted, particularly with people. Very quiet, given this was only about 8.30 on a Friday evening, I guess nobody sent me the Facebook invitation for the parties that were happening all along the coastal suburbs. So let's recap. Mauritius is one of the most stunning parts of the world, if you can afford the hotel bills. Fortunately, I was there for work and perhaps a bit overambitious in terms of the amount of free time I was going to get. Should I have brought my film camera? Probably not. I only shot a few frames, even if those frames were some of my favourite photos. Should I have brought all of my lenses? Definitely not. The Nikon Z 24 to 200 millimeters is an amazing travel lens and I probably didn't need anything else. After all, it got me images like these. That said, I couldn't have bagged long shots like these without the wondrous 180 to 600 millimeter. Seriously, this is all of the ultra telephoto I think I'm ever going to need. Not exactly a great traveling companion though, unless you're comfortable carrying a lump of concrete around your neck with a huge sign on it saying, mug me. Port Louis didn't strike me as a particularly unsafe city though. During the day, it was a hive of activity, but at night, well, I probably met more dogs on the road than I did people, but I really enjoyed my brief night photography walk around the city. There's a lot to be said for just taking a bright 35 millimeter prime like this Nikon F 1.8 and just leaving yourself open to what you see. Lots of random photos. A few that I'd say are pretty good and maybe even one or two that are portfolio worthy depending on how fussy I'm feeling and once I've had a bit more distance to reflect. Definitely there are things I could have done better and please do let me know in the comments what you think they might be. And yes, before you say it, I probably did go a little bit heavy on the post processing. But I've shot a lot of black and white film this year. Color was calling to me and damn those Nikon Z6 RAW files are asking to be beaten to breaking point. I deliberately underexposed about a stop to preserve the neon highlights and lifting up the shadows just creates an explosion of color. Seriously, this thing sucks in light like a black hole. So I returned from Mauritius after all too brief a visit. Was it paradise lost or just paradise lost opportunities? Regardless, I don't think I made the most of the place, despite being overpacked. Mauritius is amazing and I just wish I had more issues than I was able to take in over a few days. I guess I'll just have to find an excuse to go back. Later.